हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर कीर्ति जैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर दिपसेरु न्यू दिल्ली टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक मॉड्यूल दैट इज क्वांटम डॉट्स एंड इट्स रोल इन डायग्नोसिस एंड इम्प्लीकेशन इन ड्रग डिलीवरी अंडर द पेपर नैनो बायोटेक्नोलॉजी सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस सी व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दिस मॉड्यूल इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल लर्न अबाउट द डेफिनेशन डेफिनेशन मींस व्हाट आर द क्वांटम डॉट्स and what is their structure what are their compositions how their size will affect their properties as imaging agents the most important use of quantum dots is their imaging properties we will also learn about the history of quantum dots how you can characterize the quantum dots what are the imaging applications of quantum dots and their biological applications the quantum dots attract the scientists for they are simultaneous targeting and imaging potential in biomedical application as you can see in this image here i have shown that yes quantum dots can be simultaneously used for the imaging applications as well as targeting application as well as for the delivery of therapeutic agents so hence they are the promising candidates for the theranostic applications that we will discuss in the last module that we will discuss in the last module that is the module 17 theranostic applications the eventual use of quantum dots is to dramatically improve clinical diagnostic tests for early detection of cancer as well as some other diseases i have mentioned here cancer because quantum dots has mostly investigated for the treatment of cancer they have also been investigated for some other diseases also but in the cancer their use is particularly uh, <coughs> in the cancer their use is particularly important because quantum dots gives us the opportunity to simultaneously image the disease as well as to treat the disease in the recent years quantum dots were introduced to cell biology as an alternative fluorescent probe because of their fluorescence properties quantum dots are basically made up of uh, groups or the elements belonging to the semiconductor groups that is uh, group 3 and 5 and group 2 and group 4 these are the nanoparticle material means they have size range in 1 to 10 nanometer and are evident as fluorescence under a light source like laser so this property that we have discussed in the last that is they have they emit fluorescence under a light source and that makes them applicable for the different imaging applications they have been used in the different industrial applications but they are also currently being investigated for the different biotechnological applications also quantum dots are basically the nanometer size radiant semiconductor crystals and have inimitable physical and chemical properties due to their size and highly squished structure and this enables them to for in vivo imaging that include live cell and whole animal imaging blood cancer assay and cancer detection and treatment here you can see this is the structure that is showing the quantum dots structure uh, in this you can see there is a core and there is a cell as we discussed in the previous slide they are made up of semiconductor groups like group 2 and 4 and group 3 and 5 so here you can see one group made the core and the other made the cell of the quantum dots quantum dots can be designed to have emission peaks at diverse wavelengths by adjusting their size so you can adjust you can adjust either their size as well as their composition to have different emission peaks the conductivity of these semiconductors lies between that of distinct molecules and bulk semiconductors so they are the chain or they are the link or the bridge between the bulk semiconductors and the simple molecule that can conduct light the properties of semiconductors could be changed by constraining the properties of the electron and the hole that you can do with by changing the elements the changing size and the shape of individual crystals and the conductive properties of quantum dots could be altered by changing the size as well as shape of and the composition of the quantum dots the crystal size is inversely proportional to the band gap as we will see in the next slide there is a figure has been given 
which will show if you will increase the size of quantum dots there will be simultaneous decrease in the band gap this band gap is the between the covalent between the balance bond and the conductance bond the smaller the crystal size the larger will be the band gap and hence greater will be the difference in energy between the highest balance band and the lowest conduction band so when you will emit light on the quantum dots and after then when they will emit the light you will see if the size is small you will get the higher energy gap and that will gives you the different wavelengths of the light or the different type of color of fluorescence emitted by the quantum dots hence the energy required to excite the dot will be more and therefore more energy is released when the crystal returns to resting stage so when the balance when the gap between the balance band and the co conductance band is large definitely the energy required to excite the dot will be more from the conductance band to the balance band and as the crystal size will grow this gap will gap will be, become smaller and there will be the shift of color from the red to blue in the light emitted here you can see as we have discussed in the previous slide there is a band gap band gap is that is the band gap between the balance one and the conduction one when you give energy to some molecules there is transition of the electrons from the balance bond and conduction bond and when the electrons come back from the conduction bond into the balance bond you get the emission of the specific light so that's why we have seen in the previous slide that when you give some light source quantum dots emits energy or the fluorescence in a particular wavelength and with this you can use them for the imaging techniques in this image you can see that as you are increasing the size there is decrease in the band gap and on this basis you can get the different emission wavelength now the biotechnological applications of quantum dots as i told you previously although quantum dots has been investigated sufficiently for the different industrial applications if we will consider the biotechnological applications there has been only few reports on their their application in the biotechnology but still these few reports have shown some promising effect or the promising outcome so that attracted the scientists to further work on the different biological aspect of the quantum dots so quantum dots can be conjugated to different biological molecules like proteins targeting and imaging agents further they can also be used as imaging as agents by themselves and also can be conjugated with the other imaging agents to improve their imaging properties you can conjugate them with the oligonucleotides you can conjugate with the some small molecules which are used in the direct binding of the quantum dots to areas of interest for to develop bio labeling bio sensing imaging and targeting devices the surface modification of quantum dots has led to the development of a new generation of probes which with integrated functionalities of labeling and drug or gene delivery applications quantum dots have shown some promising results that has generated the interest of scientists to fundamental studies and the applications like biological probes fluorescence biosensors biological imaging and labeling probes and this is because of their unique optical properties that includes the broad absorption with narrow photoluminescence spectra high quantum yield and low photo bleaching and resistance to chemical degradation in comparison with the other classical fluorophores for light emitting diodes and solar cells now we will discuss about the history of quantum dots quantum dots were first discovered in 1980s by a russian physicist and they have reported this in their paper by applying a particle in sphere model a relation between size and band gap was derived for the semiconductor nanoparticles as we have discussed in the previous slides also in 1990 efficient light emission from silicon was reported by the kenham in 2004 work on yield enhancement and the photostability of quantum dots was done by jaswal and fine and in the 2005 quantum dots fluorescence quenching technique was used for optical dna oligonucleotide sensors that lead to the further advancement in the application of quantum dots for their imaging properties 
in 2008 high photochemical stability of core cell quantum dots were proposed as an alternative organic dye so they can also be used for for the application that are particularly relevant to dye in 2010 biju et al proposed functional groups for bioreceptor immobilization and to anticipate the toxicity issues after that the quantum dots have been used in drug delivery and targeting as well as for the diagnostic and imaging purposes and also for the simultaneous imaging and the drug delivery applications additionally quantum dots are used for sensing of dna and nucleotides so that is really a good advantage that that really leads to a good advantage of quantum dots particularly in relation to the dna defects oriented originated diseases characterization of quantum dots is really a difficult task because of their very small size range still we have some highly advanced modern and analytical techniques which are being used currently for the evaluation of quantum dots for the different aspects that includes their size structure composition uh, if you have conjugated them for their functional groups that has been conjugated further if you uh, after conjugation whether they are able to further elicit their imaging potential or not all this you can evaluate with the different characterization techniques that includes like uh, here in the first point you can say that scanning electron microscopy sem transmission electron microscopy dynamic light scattering then combination of scanning and transmission electron microscopy that is scanning transmission electron microscopy x ray fluorescence x ray diffraction and the atomic force microscopy you can use for the elucidation of the size and structure of quantum dots then optical properties you can evaluate by using uv visual and pure photoluminescence spectroscopy the composition you can evaluate with the again the photoluminescence spectroscopy and uh, photoluminescence excitation and raman scattering spectroscopy here in this table you can see there are different techniques which has been used for the characterization of quantum dots and it's some name of these techniques so first include the spectroscopy techniques that include nuclear magnetic resonance infrared and raman spectroscopy that we have discussed in the previous slide can be used for the determination of composition ultraviolet visual spectroscopy x ray diffraction and the mass spectrometry mass spectrometry you can use to determine the mass of the quantum dots scattering techniques again can be used for to determine the size and structure that includes small angle neutron scattering laser light scattering as well as um, dynamic light scattering then you have electrical techniques that includes electrochemistry electrophoresis to de decide whether there is charge on the surface or not microscopy includes transmission electron microscopy scanning electron microscopy atomic force microscopy and scanning transmission electron microscopy rheological and physical properties we can evaluate with the differential scanning calorimetry that is dsc and dielectric spectroscopy if you are using quantum dots for the biotechnological application or some biological application it is necessary that we should evaluate what is their pharmacology and pharmacokinetics what are these two terms pharmacology and pharmacokinetics are the terms which are used in the pharmacy Uh, the sign that deals with the activity of the drug pharmacology is basically we can, you can say what a drug can do to the biological system or the what a drug can do to the body and the pharmacokinetics means what body can does to a drug so pharmacokinetics include here four basic parts that is absorption distribution metabolism and excretion these four kinetics are the part of pharmacokinetics absorption will give you how the that quantum dots if you are giving them into the body how they will absorb into the into the circulation system, systemic circulation if you are not giving by directly into the intravenous injection then distribution if you are giving by the directly intravenous injection then you are directly injecting into the blood so there will be no need of absorption the second is distribution in distribution after going into this systemic circulation that is in the blood the uh, or the quantum dots will go into the different parts of the body then it will also be metabolized or excreted 
So in the pharmacokinetics of quantum dots, what scientist has evaluated till now, on which basis I have given a little summary here that mostly the root of delivery that has been used for the quantum dots has been parental. Then absorption is mostly it has shown the receptor mediated endocytic mechanism that is at the cellular level and uh, quantum dots with the targeting functional group shown the ability to accumulate in the selected target tissues. So it is showing yes you can use quantum dots for the targeted delivery but only a little or even no information is available about the blood and quantum dots interaction. As I told you earlier because there is there are only few reports on the biotechnological applications of quantum dots. Further the interaction between the quantum dots and plasma protein is not clear. Next point, the quantum dot core does not appear to be involved in extensive enzymatic metabolism, but the cell and the coating appear to degrade under photolytic and oxidative conditions and hence release the toxic cadmium cores. So again, we can have here the issue of nanotoxicity. See the last point in the slide number four that only a very little information is available on the degradation products or biological effects of quantum dots. So at present we can't reach any conclusion regarding their toxicity as well as also on their efficacy and safety because after evaluating them systematically and thoroughly then we can say yes they can be used for the different biotechnological application but without any doubt you can say they can be safely they can be used promisingly for different labeling and imaging applications. Uh, now we will discuss about the, the main nanobiomedicinal applications of quantum dots. Here you can say although it is anticipated by the scientists that quantum dots could be used for the different or huge potential applications in the biotechnology and also in the not only alone also in combination with the other carrier systems like with the liposomes, with the dendrimers, with carbon nanotubes. There have been also reports on the application of quantum dots with these other nano carrier system as a hybrid nano carrier for the different biotechnological applications. So basically quantum dots has been used in the biotechnological application that includes see on the top left side from cell imaging. So they can be used for the imaging of a cell that gives you the opportunity to image any cell and in this way you can detect the disease as well as you can also make exact prognosis about the disease. You can develop the biosensor, biosensor to sense different physiological activity in the body like glucose sensor. Okay. So that will be helpful in the diseases like diabetes. Then bioanalytical assays could be developed for the determination of the you know, the drug in the body or the some other substances in the body or any constraint in the body. Then it could also be used for the in vivo animal targeting. So as we discussed in the previous slide also that you can use quantum dots for the targeting application. Although there have been few reports like with the folic acid uh, conjugated quantum dots or the chitosan uh, coated quantum dots that has shown some targeting propensity as well as apart from in vivo animal targeting you can also do the ex vivo cell imaging. So before using the quantum dots into the in vivo or in the preclinical trials or in the animal models we can evaluate their safety efficacy and the toxicity in the ex vivo cell imaging where we can see whether they are able to elicit their imaging properties or not whether they are able not to target the drug to the uh, or to deliver the drug into the cells or whether they are able to do elicit their action without uh, showing any toxicity so further in the nanobiomedicinal applications due to their unique optical properties quantum dots are particularly being used for the diagnostic purposes. They are being used for the diagnosis of diseases particularly like cancer, AIDS in that the regular diagnosis is really important and quantum dots has shown in the preliminary reports that they could be really helpful in diagnosing the disease in the early stage as well as for the proper prognosis of the disease. Prognosis means to determine what could be the prospective of any medical condition means what is the condition today and what could be the condition tomorrow or after certain period that is the prognosis and quantum dots could be really helpful in this area further 
we will discuss in the 17th module about the theranostic application so quantum dots is an important tool in such in theranostic application because of their amazing properties they can be used to deliver the drug by themselves so they will give you their intrinsic imaging properties so you can use them for diagnostic application and if they are being used for the drug delivery application although they may not be you able to use directly but you can use them with the coating like chitosan and encapsulating the drug in that chitosan coating and then you can use them for the delivery of the drug the second point in vivo imaging application of quantum dots are critically influenced by the type and structure of organic and bioorganic cells of the quantum dots because there have been different types of quantum dots made up of different metals like cadmium magnesium zinc oxide etc so accordingly you can develop the different types of quantum dots having different in vivo imaging application because this composition determines the biocompatibility of quantum dots colloidal stability and solubility in the physiological fluid all these three things are really important for the biotechnological applications further uh, the basic physiological parameters and the cytotoxicity as we have seen earlier that cadmium could lead to some toxicity so we will have to use such composition that will lead to minimum toxic consequences now scientists have developed some biocompatible water soluble quantum dot mice cells so it is the combination of quantum dots and the mice cells so this is one example of nano hybrid and that has demonstrated the uptake intracellular dispersion into the cultured neurons then quantum dots and ligand interaction is used in the detection of defects in dna and other biomolecular and protein detection as well as in the cellular labeling so you can detect the defects in the dna so this could be really helpful in the treatment of genetic diseases like thalassemia autoimmune disorders etc that could be really path breaking advantage if we can use quantum dots promisingly in this area they have been used in the in vitro and in vivo application in in vitro they have been used for biomolecular tracking in cells cellular imaging and tissue staining in in vivo quantum dot bio distribution by vascular imaging and then you can go for tracking and tumor imaging so currently what is going on that uh, with the quantum dots they gives you the opportunity to simultaneously tag multiple inter and intracellular components of the live cells for time period ranging from seconds to months so you can do immediate diagnosis as well as you go, go for the longer prognosis with the quantum dots to monitor condition of any disease the different colors of quantum dots can label different cell components that can be easily visualized with fluorescent microscopy so since you can develop the quantum dots as we have seen in the previous slide in that it has been shown that increase in the size reduces the difference in the gap between the balance one and covalence one so in this way you can control and you can develop the quantum dots with the different fluorescent wavelength and accordingly you can get the different colors so you can color or you can label the different cell components in the different color like lysosome in a different color nucleus in a different color and cytoplasm in a different color so you can visualize the different parts of cell using the different types of quantum dots there is one example cadmium selenium quantum dots bind typically to cellulose and lignin in the cell wall and hence you can get a fluorescent image of a plant cells because it will bind particularly with the cell wall then biotinylated cholera toxin b could be bind with the quantum dot avidin conjugates and hence it can be used for the labeling of the ganglia quantum dots are also being explored as multifunctional nano medicines for anti cancer chemotherapeutic agents there have been one report in which the folate conjugated quantum dots has been evaluated for the delivery of doxorubicin then reports are available on the chitosan coated quantum dots for the delivery of anti cancer drug so in the anti cancer drug delivery they are particularly useful because they gives you the opportunity to develop the theranostic type of system so this theranostic system will gives you the opportunity to deliver the simultaneously the drug for the therapy of cancer as well as the imaging agent will gives you the information or the prognosis of the disease
In the last few decades, quantum dots have received considerable interest in the diagnosis, imaging and treatment of cancer and other diseases also. Quantum dots are the optical semiconducting nanomaterial and inherently possess numerous advantages over traditional fluorescent dyes such as increased photostability, higher brightness and the narrow fluorescence spectrum. Now in these slides, we will discuss about the nanobio, medicinal and nanobiotechnological applications of quantum dots. Till date, various researchers and scientists have developed fluorescent nanoprobes and evaluated them on various animal models and represented one of the fastest moving and exciting interfaces of nanotechnology. Quantum dots have unique optical properties such as a broad absorption spectrum, narrow size tunable emission spectrum, high photostability, quantum efficiency and strong non-linear response from quantum confinement effects. The toxicity of quantum dots could be easily minimized by coating of PEG, polymers and bi other biomaterials which could make them more biocompatible and better candidate in the cancer theranostic applications as well as in the other applications particularly the imaging applications in the biological systems the ovarian cancer represents one of the most common gynecological malignancies in industrialized nations and in this the quantum thoughts are being investigated for the theranostic applications one example of such investigation includes that savia and co-workers designed tumor targeted pH responsive quantum dots mucin 1 aptamer dox conjugate for chemotherapy of ovarian cancer. In that, they have used aptamer, quantum dots, and the doxorubicin as a chemotherapeutic agent. Aptamer has been used here as a directing or homing device or the targeting device. In this case, doxorubicin was attached to quantum dots by a pH sensitive hydrogen bond to provide greater stability in systemic circulation. And this conjugate showed the high potential in treatment of multi drug resistant ovarian cancer. The most important applications of quantum dots lies in their unique properties, including nanometric size range and their imaging properties. Although quantum dots has been investigated only a little for biological applications, yet the preliminary investigation suggested that a thorough investigation of their drug delivery and biological applications might lead to some promising conclusions.